Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us caring for a loved one with memory loss. I had so much fun with today's guest that I invited her back. So thanks for joining me, Jincy. Oh, Jennifer, thank you for having me back. It was a lot of fun the other day. I really enjoyed it. Me too. So today we're going to talk about your book, 365 Caregiving Tips. Correct. Right. Oh, good. We did. I love it when the brain cells actually work. I know. It's always encouraging, isn't it? And I don't know about you, but mine feel like they're working a lot less these days. I keep losing things, and I know that they're in my house somewhere. But where? So yeah. how did you come up with 365 caregiving tips? Well, I am one of actually five co-authors on our books. Here is, this is our first book, 365 Caregiving Tips, Practical Tips from Everyday Caregivers. And we started with that one. We are five caregivers who just met online. So there's me, and I take care of my husband. And there's uh, Kathy. Her husband has passed away, but he had uh, dementia with Lewy bodies. There's Peggy, and her husband had a variety of, of issues. There's Trish, who as much as she doesn't agree, she really is kind of the brains behind the whole thing. <laughs> so let's give credit where credit's due. And her brother has, um, has had epilepsy his whole life. It's very severe. Mm. And then her husband, Richard, who's actually also the fifth of the co-authors, like poor guy with the four of us women, um, he has his own issues from being hit by a drunk driver years ago. Mm. And then his mother recently passed away, but she also had health issues as well. So that's how we are all these five caregivers. And like I say, we just met online and we, you know, we synced with each other. And Trish kind of came up with the idea of, hey, you know, what about this? And so we said, sure. And, you know, there's 365 days in a year, 365 tips. Somehow it was a good fit until you're trying to squeeze out 365 sometimes. <laughs> so, ah. I'm so sorry, technology okay. and being a doofus. I was my hand and there was my ceiling. I hope you like them both. <laughs> okay. So so that would have been tip number what? 366. Don't flop your, your iPad yeah. over while you're filming. Well, uh, I was gonna say you guys met online before meeting online was required. <laughs> was yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yeah. And actually there's I still haven't met Peggy in person ever. So <laughs> But, you know, we talk on the phone and we all get along. And so we have written our books actually through email. That's, we, that's cool. That's going to be yeah. the norm for a while, I think. It is. So we send all our tips into Trish, and she's the one who um, puts them all together and publishes them through lulu.com, which has been a great, um, a great resource for us. It's been a great way to publish our books. And we can do the print books, and we can do the e-books, and it's really nice. And right now, people can, you know, it's, you can just go in there and grab an e-book. Um, Trish and I share the social media job for our group. So every other week, it's, you know, her turn or mine. So I've been doing, so I started doing videos a couple, like, I don't know, last, well, last month. It seems like it was ages ago, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> it was about five weeks ago, I think. And because one day it was, you know, it was my week to, to post. And it was just like somehow coming up with a cute graphic and typing something up was way too much effort. It just seemed easier to go, hi, I'm Jitsi with 365 caregiving tips. And here's a tip for you today. <laughs> so. I keep the videos to under a minute, partially because if you make them over a minute, then Instagram wants to either truncate it or turn it into a story. So, and I figure who wants to listen very long, although we did have a story about that earlier. And so, yeah, so then we um, followed our first book. Well, so our first book, here I go again, just taking over your interview. That's okay. <laughs> our chapters are things like general caregiving, medications, bathing and dressing, Meal time, mobility, you know, incontinence, uh, advocacy and time management, holidays and travel, self care, wound care, you know, uh, chronic pain management, and final tips, and then a little bit about the authors. Then we followed it up with a travel and respite version. And this one is what it says it's about traveling together by air, sea, and land, pretty much hotel accommodations, dealing with medications and mealtime and mobility and incontinence, and then respite, when you're going to take some time and maybe your loved one's going to stay in a facility for a short while while you take a break or even just taking a break. And we include some self-care quick refreshers in this book. Well, after we published the second book, um, Kathy said, you know, I've just really gotten this 
this feeling, I think we need to publish our books in Spanish. That's a really cool idea, isn't it? None of the five of us speak Spanish. And you're in Southern California. That's even worse than my lack of Spanish. <laughs> I took German in high school, okay? You know, and I never regretted it, to tell you the truth, because I don't think I need Spanish anyway, because I'm stubborn. So <laughs> Kathy started using Google Translate, and then someone looked at it and said, oh, dear God, no, you can't do that. <laughs> well, about the same time, she knew someone, and it's like she knew the wife, and the husband had been a professor of Spanish, and he had, I think he had some health problems and he wasn't able to work and was looking for something to do. And voila. our first two books are in Spanish. Yeah, and I then, learned quickly Google Translate is okay. We had a French student stay with us for a month of the month of July, 2018. Oh, uh -huh. And I'm in the part of Contra Costa County that grows, uh, we grow Brentwood sweet white corn. Oh, so I'm like, I know that corn is, well, I Googled it because I wasn't sure what corn on the cob was uh -huh. in French, even though I took French in high school, but nobody around here speaks it, so pfft, I yeah. don't either anymore. But it, it's been a couple years. Yeah, you know, and the high school French teacher, she was not very nice, so it's like, she did not make it an enjoyable experience. So, oh, okay. um, my husband and I keep threatening to do... Babel or Duolingo or there's podcasts oh, that sure. help you learn languages because yeah. our, you know, if we ever get to leave Brentwood again, <laughs> we'd like to go to France. Oh, there you go. Something um, to look forward to. Yeah. Um, fortunately, we're still young enough-ish that that should be fine. Um, there you go. United Airlines owes us two flights because they won't give us our money back for the Hawaii trip that was canceled. Uh. Yeah. yeah. They're good for two years and there's another Rotary Convention next year, I think. <laughs> That's the uh, whole problem. It's like, it's supposed to be in Taipei, Taiwan. Oh. So even that's, that's even okay, but I don't know if we're going or not. So, yeah. Maybe go to France instead. What the heck? Yeah. You never know. Hell, I'd go to Canada at this point. <laughs> I like Canada a lot. Oh, admit it. You'd come down to Southern California at this point. True. <laughs> I love Southern California too. So anyway, so I Googled this poor kid. I don't know. He, he was, he'd been awake for almost 24 hours. So I'm trying, I'm go I Google corn on the cob translation and he goes no 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 and he said and then he looks at my phone and he goes no 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 is maize and i'm like oh okay that one i know because you know we have lots of native american tribes yeah. around here too <laughs> so. i didn't know it was the same look at that we're bilingual or trilingual we didn't even know it i know it's, it's fantastic so but i'm glad that you found somebody that needed a purpose and yes. you needed help and that is such a great thing yeah we all need purpose yeah. So let me throw out, so you might want to get your books handy, the English ones. <laughs> okay. Oh, actually, I was going to say, we have one more book, though, too. Oh, okay. It's, a pre it's the Hospitals, Care Facilities, and Hospice book. So it's definitely not the favorite book, but it's still a needed book. So now I'm ready, except the Spanish ones we're going to throw off to the side. Yeah, don't, don't try to reference those. We might be here all day. <laughs> um, oh, wait, I've got, I can get my phone and use Google Translate. <laughs> That would be interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, that, would, that would make for some good laughs. I don't know if it would help people. So, and this is, this is a giant curveball. So if we need to come back to this one, let Ooh, me I know. I can't wait. Um, I have had a lot of people reach out to me and say, being in isolation has been detrimental for their loved ones. And a lot of them, their loved ones are in closer to the later stages or are in the later stages. Yeah. And it's hard. Like one gal, her, it's interesting. Her dad actually reads. He's 93 and he has Lewy body dementia. And he was, we did a catch up episode with her on how it's going with the isolation. And he was reading in the background the whole time. Oh. Um, and she goes, I hope that wasn't too bad. I'm like, oh, it's flavor. You know, it is what it is. Right. But she's having trouble with like, because she's the daughter mm -hmm. and the caregiver can't come for a while because oh. her sister got sick. Oh. So they have to isolate her so they don't bring it to him, but he's not eating much, oh. not drinking. And she, she'll hold the cup up to his lips and he just ignores her. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a lot like my mom was, Oh, you know, it's, and it's, I think it's a parent child dynamic. Yeah. I think that's part of it. Um, her or brother did get more, um, liquid into him than she did. And she did get watermelon into him. 
Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's, that was my first suggestion. So, um, you have any ideas on how people that are living in isolation and they're seeing their loved ones decline rapidly? Like, they can see a huge difference between two months ago and now. Mm. What they might be able to do. I don't know that there's an answer to that, but I'm going to just either. throw out the big question first. Oh, why not? Yeah. Well, as far as like drinking, my first thought is something like um, a straw. If they have a straw that they can use, because some, that might. I mean, I know we outlawed those in California too. I have metal it, ones in my purse. I, I have plastic ones. Oh. From before. Oh, okay. From quite a while I think, ago. You know. I think I do somewhere in the crafting stash. I know. I think we all have a, a straw somewhere. So my thought would be to try a straw. My next suggestion would be to flavor it. If they're trying to get, if you're trying to get water down, flavor it with anything. Like I don't mean like vodka, but <laughs> maybe. But I do mean like you know if you can even put juice in it, or if your big issue is just trying to get liquids in them, you know. Who cares if you're giving them juice and it has sugar unless they're a diabetic? And I know that's a separate issue. But what I'm saying is pretty much try anything at that point. Chocolate yeah, that's milk, a good idea. You know? She was. What do you she, have? She was doing, she, her brother brought Gatorade and that helped. And I'm not a huge Gatorade fan because, well, it doesn't taste that great. But anything that's that bright blue or bright orange, just, mm, I don't think. It's that, true. I don't think that looks too good for you. But, hey, it's better but than. But how old was he? 90 something? 93. Okay, at 93, he can drink Gatorade. Yeah. Bright blue is okay. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and she was, she's concerned that he's depressed, and I bet because, you know, their, their social day program is canceled, although yeah. um, the gal that's running it has been working with the state, which, you know, as a Californian yourself, that, yeah. <laughs> that moves a little slower than we'd like, to reopen with limited people, uh -huh. um, like two or three instead of, I don't know, six or eight. Oh, yeah. And so what I suggested to her, I said, you know, my maternal grandfather always said, we don't get out of this life alive. True. And yeah, nobody I know has. And I said, you know, go to the church, meet. There's another gal in our support group who's taking care of her husband. Meet them. Just sit on different benches. Right. I mean, what are we protecting them from if they're just going to be 10 times worse in three or four months? I mean. No, it's true. You know. It's, it's true. different I mean, for your husband because he's not that old. Right. At 93, you've lived. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I would say, you know, get him out maybe in the front yard on a chair and let the neighbors know in advance and ask them to come walk by the house and visit him. That's a great idea. I keep threatening. I'm like, hey, just give me your address. My husband and I will ride our bike spikes. She can't be that right. far away from us. Yeah. I mean, and we could just talk at him. Yes. Or, you know, ask a couple of people, hey, can you drive by with a sign that says hi or with a balloon or with a something, you know, like they're doing with the virtual birthday parties for people. And and not to be mean, but if he has any form of dementia, perhaps the same people could just drive up and down the street a few times. That is he true. You can circle the block. You know, if you have the passenger side towards him one time, that's one person he can talk to. And if you have the driver's side towards him, really, that's another person he could talk to. That is true. That's a great it, idea. It might be a way to, you know, keep him with some level of stimulation. I'm going to text her that idea when we're done because that's yeah. a fit. See, I've been racking my brain and I, you know, I'm, I guess I was thinking a little too literal, like what can I do to help? Mm. So that's something I know she takes him for drives. It was, it was funny. She texted me a video. Uh -huh. They had gone through the Dutch brothers drive through it's a coffee place I don't oh know if you guys, okay we I don't, don't have it no. okay we just got one in Brentwood and a, they have a double drive through so it's oh like gosh I'm gonna date myself here remember the little photo mat booths oh yes okay they're about that size maybe a little oh, bigger tiny. but they're about that size with two like a double drive through oh, my gosh and prior to nobody getting to go away it, it it had cars like all the way around it. It was crazy. And ours literally just opened like three or four months ago. It's really oh, sad. Oh, wow. Actually, yeah, I think it timing? opened in February. Yeah, terrible timing. So they had gone there and gotten um, something to drink. And he was, I think he was drinking. He had the cup in his hand and he's literally reading um, something about guaranteed, blah, blah, blah. It was a little bit hard to understand it. But he like kept turning the cup and reading and <laughs> oh. around and around. I'm like, oh my God. I told her, you need a square cup, someplace to stop. 
<laughs> yes, that would be helpful. But I thought your suggestion of meeting some other people like in a church parking lot or something, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, the, um, there's a winery. We do grow a lot of wine grapes out here too. Mm -hmm. um, that had, they basically had a, a virtual, not virtual, they had like a vehicle wine club. So basically oh. everybody pulled into the circle drive of this, this winery. It's like a ranch winery uh -huh. kind of thing. Not, not quite like Napa. Nice, but not quite like Napa. And I think they had ended up with like a hundred vehicles that came through. They were picking oh, wow. up their wine, their wine club. I guess it was a, I don't know, like a socially distancing wine club event. Okay. And they had a guy, you know, they had like a big patch of grass, really large um, section of lawn. And this guy just sat out there, played on his guitar. So people got to hear music and, and get out of their houses. It was, you know, nice sunny day. And, and, the workers were bringing bags, you know, they had the masks and the gloves on and, and well, well, that didn't seem a lot of fun to me, but apparently people had a lot of fun. So That's good. I think our, our uh, perspective of fun is sort of changing as well. I'm excited if I see neighbors talking outside at a safe distance and I can go join them. I feel like, oh my gosh, it's so cool. Like a human. <laughs> I know. I know. That's how I feel. I noticed when we're out on our bikes or walking the dogs, people seem a lot more friendly. I agree. I think it's just, I don't know if it's desperation or I'm not sure Probably. what, it, I don't know what it is, but you know, six feet apart. Hi. Of course the dogs are all trying to get right there in the middle. I think it's also kind of a common fear. You know, we all have the same thing we're afraid of right now or are unsure of right now. And I think that helps bond us. That's a good point too. Mm -hmm. So let me, let me think. So my mom was in a, a res care residence mm -hmm. and I know a lot of people think, oh, you put your love on a memory care and your caregiving days are over. That's no, they're baloney. not. No, that's no, it's real not fun when all. they call you up and say, your mama need uh, new shoes. Your mama need this. You're like, you couldn't have told me that yesterday when I was there. Yeah. <laughs> or you couldn't, or I get there and they say, and your mom needs toilet paper. She needs these toiletries or whatever. And it's like, you couldn't have told me on my way here. No. I, yeah, I understand because my dad actually, so my mom had passed away unexpectedly. And even in the hospital, my dad, as my, before my mom's dead, my dad says, well, I'm going to come and live with you. <laughs> She's not dead. Okay. But okay, dad, you know what? We can deal with this. So he came and lived with us. They had retired to Arizona. So he moved back to Orange County and lived with us for about three or four months. And I knew what my dad was like. And one day he says on a Wednesday, I want to move on Saturday. <laughs> So I had scoped out the places between the time my mom passed away and the time he moved out here. And then I'd taken my husband and son and we kind of all agreed on one. And so it was fine. We had a place to, for him to live and it was a senior apartment sort of, but I knew from my mom talking about this aging in place thing that that's what I needed to look for. So, and that was perfect because he lived in this apartment from when he moved in, when he was independent for a man with a walker who had had many, many TIAs and was in his eighties until he passed away in his bed in that apartment room um, in, you know, in his apartment on hospice uh, 25 months after my mom died. Mm. And it, but as you say, you know, I mean, and what was, so what was nice was he could live in there while he was on hospice. He could get more nursing care from them. I just said, well, you know, same place, just the bill went up depending on what he needed. <laughs> but you are not kidding. You're still the caregiver. You're like, get the, hi, your dad just choked on something. So we did the Heimlich on him at lunch, but he's fine. Yeah. You're like, okay, then why did you call me? <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, oh, they were, were required to. Oh, hey, hi, your dad just fell in the dining hall. I was always at lunch. At lunch, he kind of said, but he's fine. You know, those kind of phone calls. I mean, one day uh, we were at a restaurant that was like, we'd come back from taking our, from being at Boy Scout camp for a week with our son. And we were at a restaurant that was basically on the diagonal corner from his apartment complex. And I see the 911 call going to his apartment complex. <laughs> and then my phone rings. Oh dear. Hey, hi. Yeah. Your dad's having a problem. And not, the paramedics are here. I'm like, yeah, I can see him. I'm like, okay, we're going to finish eating. And then I'm coming to the hospital. No worries. But I was just yeah. like, so, yes, I agree that even if your loved one's in a facility, no, you are still the primary caregiver. Your days are not over at that point. Nope. I think that's one of the things that's really weird because it's been 20 days since my mom passed away. Oh, and that's nothing. No. I'm doing better this week than Saturday. 
Saturday was rough. This week has not been, oh, it's only Monday, so what am I talking about? <laughs> that's okay. Even if one day is good, that's the good thing. Yeah. Some days um, are good and some days just aren't. This is true. Saturday was um, overcast and it was like almost trying to rain, which, you know, well, you guys have had a ton of rain, but it's like, yeah. excuse me, the, the time for rain is over. Yeah. You know, although, you know, we can occasionally get a little bit in May and, but no, it's time for it to be done, even though we didn't have enough this year. So it was a little bit rough, but it's like, I think that's the whole thing. I don't think I realized that she was like in the back of my mind all the time when I would record podcasts, I would ask questions oh, yeah. like my mom's doing this or like I recorded an episode with a gal on dealing with difficult behaviors just about the time my mom started being a whole lot more difficult. So, oh, good. you know, so now it's like, well, now I have to ask questions for other caregivers because now I'm a caregiver to caregivers. That's there you go. Name. That's yeah. a good way to look at it. And I knew that would be the case. I just didn't think that like literally the, uh, my podcast launched May 1st, 2018. So I didn't think that mom would be gone before the end of the second year. So it's yeah. weird. So what are some of your favorite tips? That might be the best way to. Ooh, okay. Well, I have been um, sharing tips, like I say, on my week for social media. And so I've been trying try to pick some tips out of our books. And what's funny is because our first book was published in 2016, which at this point is almost like a lifetime ago in everything that's changed. But then again, January of 2020 would be a lifetime ago in some ways. was for me. I lived in a yeah. different house. I still had a mom. I had a photography business. <laughs> oh, my. So one of the interesting things was that in our book, tip number 57 from our first book was about attend events and see distant family members without leaving home. And it talked about using FaceTime or Skype, because we had heard of Zoom at that point, if it even existed, to attend a wedding, a family gathering, or see family and friends at the holidays if you can't make a trip. So it's stuff that's very relevant to what we're doing today. But, you know, this one, um, tip 26, take pictures or make videos. Life may not be picture perfect, but you'll be grateful for those pictures of your loved one with your family and friends in the future. We did a Zoom Easter on Easter, and I made sure to take a picture of the, all of us on the Zoom screen together because that was what the Easter was this year. I can uh, attest to the fact that, I don't know if it was the day that my mom died or the day after, but I looked through all the little videos and all the photos that I have taken for myself, but also for my social media so that, cause I would take videos to kind of document what late stage Alzheimer's looked like. Oh, that was smart. Um, it was hard because oh, it felt like a violation. I knew mm -hmm. she wouldn't like it if she was in her right mind, but I'm like, I, I encounter people who are beyond clueless as to what this stage is like and i have learned and unfortunately it was a little little late in the game learning some of this stuff but you have to be as prepared for mm -hmm. what it looks like at the end yeah. because i kind of felt like especially in the last 10 months like i was literally chasing you know the diamond ring down the drain because i kept thinking mm -hmm. i just got to catch up to where she is so we can you know or she needs to stop declining so i can get to you know to a solution point i can't keep fixing yeah. a problem that keeps changing and yeah, that's true um knowing you know i've you know like right at the end it's like some things just clicked into place well, better late than never i guess and i'm like okay this is this is kind of one of the messages going forward is and it and it was the message all the way through for the podcast but it was like the more you know, the easier this will be to deal with because this is not an easy disease to deal with ever. No. <laughs> and no, what works isn't. today might not work tomorrow, but no. then it might work again next week. And, and then you might have a pandemic that just throws everything up in the air. <laughs> yeah, who could have guessed that one, right? And, you know, oh. and it's funny because some of the videos, when I was doing them, it's like, man, this is weird. Like, I have one. I need to, I need to send it to my uncle because my mom was talking about how her brothers were normal people now. And I was like, okay, I don't know what they were before, but okay, now they're normal people. So I guess that's good. And then she starts talking about how she was the first in her family. And then she starts talking about some woman. And I'm like, this is like literally mental pinball. Oh, and boy. I'm just, you can hear me. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, your brothers are normal people. Oh, okay. Oh, mm-hmm. Oh, she did. Uh-huh. Okay. 
you know, mm. sometimes I'd go home and be like, oh my God, I feel like somebody just punched the crap out of my brain. Oh, I but bet. Now I look at it and I can, even though it hasn't been very long, I can look back and go, that was actually kind of funny. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because you, and that's a tip in one of our books. So probably more than one of the you have to be able to see the humor in these things and it's okay to laugh, you know? you're not laughing at the person. You're just laughing because things happen and you better realize they're actually kind of funny. And sometimes if you don't laugh, you're going to cry. And it's mm -hmm. not that it's bad to cry, but you don't want to be in that state all the time. No, no, that's not um, a fun state. No, no. And the but other thing see. with the videos and the photos is looking back over the last two years of them or three years, I guess it was, it was very comforting because it's like, I could not have done a better job. Yes. And I could have known more, learned, maybe learned things faster, but you know, I did as best I could. And it was, a, it was a dang good job if I do say so myself. And yeah. I, I don't need to prove that to anybody else. It was just really nice to be able to, to look at that and know, you know, cause the end was kind of not fun for no, anybody. Yeah. And you know, I'm really glad knowing what I know that we might not be visiting loved ones at all for a long time. Guess she picked a good time to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, and I've heard it said many times, you can only make a decision at the time based on the information you have and the resources you have and the abilities you have. You can't make a decision today based. I mean, you can't make a decision. You could never have made a decision in February is stuck up on that darn toilet paper. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> because now you could look back and say, oh my God, you should have bought toilet paper instead of like not, you know, as an example. That you is know, true. Like any of these things. I mean, one day I was beating myself up as like, oh, I should have been like more on board about like buying face masks. And I'm like, seriously, how could I have possibly known this? Even three days before I thought of it, you know, it, you could, you, it, we're really good at beating ourselves up. I think when we're caregivers, and it doesn't help the situation. It doesn't make you feel better either, but we do mm -hmm. it anyhow. But here's another tip. This is actually in the Travel and Respite book. And this is in our self-care quick refreshers. And it's tip 325. Try to make a special treat or time for you every day. 10 or 15 minutes maybe all you have and need. But even for right now, caregiver or not, that is such a valid tip because we're trying to work from home. We're spending more time than ever on work. And yet we're, you know, parents are also raising their kids while they're working. Um, when my husband and I went for a walk yesterday, we talked to some neighbors who were out with their kids. They were in their driveway and we were on the, across the street. It was all safe, I promise. <laughs> and it, we call them a young couple. You know, they might be in their 30s. I don't know how old they are. They have two children who are two and four and both the people in the um, couple are attorneys. Oh boy. And so I said, Oh, you know, you guys are working from home. And they said, yeah. And um, the, they know my son's in law school. So the said, well, you know what about those billable hours? And he went, Oh no, he's only in law school. <laughs> but he said, You know, he said, basically I used to get all my billable hours in between 8am and 6pm. And I had, you know, eight or nine or 10 hours a day. And he said, now to get that, I work till 11pm at night. Because he said, you know, I'm trying to deal with two kids and being at home and, and being a parent at the same time I'm working and it's just not working. Yeah, that's, that's rough. I've, I've heard people, broadcasters that are interviewing people, and I have to say, it makes me nuts that these broadcasters can't figure out how to do a Zoom call without that <sighs> echoey, you yes. know, it's like, stop using the microphone on your computer. Like, bring yeah. one in from the, you know, the CNN headquarters or wherever order one on yeah, amazon i would That's think I they would have resources yeah yeah it's i'm not sure maybe they don't have ones that attach to computers they have big fancy ones but still it's like come on you know well have <laughs> i you started seen? podcasting in the closet and i've heard podcasters that are like big ones that now all their hosts are basically podcasting from the closet. And I'm like, yes. I turned my whole office into a sound booth. <laughs> but on that working from home, have you seen the weatherman? I think his name is Jeff Lyon or Lyons with an S. And um, he's been broadcasting the weather from home. So it would be like, if you hear any noise, it's because my cat is trying to get into this room. And so he has Betty the weather cat who assists him sometimes now because his cat is with him at home and she wants to be right there. And, I wonder how that's actually going to change the way things are in the future because, you know, we're not going to want to go back to your basic 
polished, smooth weather reports, news report. We're going to want to see Betty the weather cat. Yes, it's true. You know, we're going to want to see people's, you know, offices and homes. And you remember the, um, I think he oh, it was a British journalist, I think. The one and who he, had his, the little kids came in while he was on the air. Yeah, and then his wife chased them in. Oh my gosh, yes. that was hysterical. Well, then they interviewed him like two years later. So the kids are older. <laughs> you know, and it's like two years ago, that was like, that went viral because it was like, oh my goodness, did you see this poor guy? His kids ran, his wife ran, and it was chaos in the background. Now people are like, this is boring. Where, where's the, you like, my dogs are right here on the floor. I'm like, where's the excitement? <laughs> I know. It's like, well, that's everyday life. You yeah, know, I think. I think we're going to want to see more of that and it's going to be interesting. Oh, well, I think we're living it, you know? Yeah. They'll probably try to go back to smooth and polished and slick and all the way it was before. And then people will be like, eh, yeah, I kind of liked it the other way too. And they're going to figure out, they're going to figure out some way to do both. I'm sure of it. Yeah. Well, asking though about the tips on the um, hospitals, care facilities and hospice book, here's a couple that might be useful for you to keep in mind. Tip 364, give yourself as much time as you need to grieve. And tip 365, remember to be kind to yourself. I know you have done your best. Mm hmm That's why you I know. drove to Michael's all the way, you know, 25 miles away and back to pick up some supplies, to do some nice things. Even if I make these cards for the, the care home mom was in or the um, the the teenager that's trying to do senior pen pals with one of we have an assisted living community here that has no memory care which i'm not oh. sure why they ever built one of those um she's trying there's 118 residents so she wants to get 118 people she wants all 118 residents to have a pen pal so oh how nice yeah wonderful project so that's kind of some of the stuff that i do like, like i do little crafty things and but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make cards for seniors. I got to hurry up if I want to do them for Mother's Day. But I want to make like happy cards just to send to them and just say, you know, somebody out here is thinking about you guys. And, yeah. you know, I think we all like to get cards, even if it's from the, oh, yeah. the sales guy. I was like, thanks for buying your new Honda from us. I'm like, oh, this is nice. You know? yeah, it's like, oh, it's so personal. Yeah, I know. Oh. <laughs> there was a question I was going to ask. About the, we were talking about the, the pictures and the videos and the Zoom. What was the previous tip we just mentioned? I hate it when uh, well, I go on a tangent. Let's see. Before the, the, the two for you, we had about taking time out to give yourself a special treat each day. Yes. Now that I know. One? Yes. Okay. My friend who's taking care of her dad. Mm -hmm. See, now I'm just transferring what I used to do for my mom to this person now. <laughs> Her dad, she's struggling because it's just the two of them in the home, and they used to have caregivers, mm -hmm. I think, five or six days a week, if not seven. Mm -hmm. um, well, he had the day program four days a week. I think basically seven days a week she had help in one way or okay. the other. Right now she has, like, one, and so she's having a tr trouble taking a shower. I mean, he read the book right next to her while she was talking with me for the podcast, because yeah. he won't go in another room with her. With If she's in another room, he will follow her. Ah. So is that 10 or 15 minutes? I'm not, you know, she's, she's struggling to figure out how to get a shower. I bet. Does he sleep at night? Um, yeah, not as good as he was when he was more active. I bet. Well, see, that would be a reason to get him out on the porch and have him a li interact a little bit with people. Maybe take him for a walk if he's mobile. Because... That yeah, you want to tire them out. Yeah, that one okay. So, or maybe if she can get him out on the porch and get people to drive by and wave, she can take out a glass of iced tea, Long Island iced tea, or just sweetened iced tea, or something that she can for a moment even. Maybe for her, I hate to say it, it's going to be a minute at a time to get that ten or fifteen minutes from okay. the sound of it. Well, I'm definitely it, texting her the idea of having the neighbors drive by. My husband yeah. participated in one of those drive-by birthday celebrations. The gal uh -huh. was sitting on the corner, and unfortunately, she lives on a court. So, well, it worked kind of good and not, but they drove down the street honking. She's a realtor, so the whole real estate community drove oh, by. Nice. And, and it was a lot of cars, like 30 or so cars. It was a lot. Oh, how fun. So, I might be able to get my Rotary Club 
bunch of people. There's a hundred of us in our club. I bet you I can get some of us to do that, drive by and see, that would be great. And maybe she could make that even um, rather than having a hundred people drive by in one day, yeah. maybe she'd like to have 20 people drive by for five days or once a week, have 10 people drive by, see what she thinks might work. Yeah. If we do the, if we try one, you know, try 10 people one day and see how he reacts. Right. That'd be great. So, okay. Yeah. I should write that down before I forget again. You can ask. You can always send me a text or an email and I'll remind you. <laughs> I can always listen to this oh, too. I was just going to say, you can always watch this, huh? Yeah, I know a great podcast where you could learn more about it. Hmm. <laughs> we're actually, um, I was going to tell you, we're working on our fourth book now. Oh, awesome. And it is going to be, we may not call it 365 caregiving tips because it's more like 365 tips for human beings because it's going to be all self-care. That's a good idea. And I mean, because who doesn't need self-care? Even pre-pandemic, we all needed to do better to we take care did, of ourselves. Yeah, but now you kind of realize, oh, yeah, I probably need to do those things. And I mean, I just kind of roll my eyes at, like I was reading a newspaper article about all the important things you need to be doing to, you know, stay healthy during this. And you need to go outside in the sun and get vitamin D. And I'm looking outside and going, well, it's gray and overcast. That, that one's out. And of course, you need to really be sleeping really well because that's important. And then what I thought was hysterical because this, everything about this, it seems like there's controversial information or at least contradicting information. You should take a suit in one, one point was about taking a shower and I was recording this. I was reading it for um, a class that I teach. And I was trying to share these self care tips with them. And I was like, okay, so it said take a really hot shower because then you sweat and you get all of this stuff out or take a really cold shower because it's good for this and this and that. And I went, you know, just take a shower and get clean. Yeah. Just, just take a shower, you know. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to sweat. In a, I don't want to get out of a shower sweaty, and I don't like a cold shower. No, I get, once my hands and feet are cold. Oh, forget it. Yeah, it's like, um, we were, it was, it was a pleasant day yesterday. The sun was shining. The wind was breezy. We're still at the warm sunshine breeze is the air, natural air conditioning that we don't need right now. Yeah. And. I sat outside for a while and was like, ah, thaw, yay, this feels great. And then the neighbors were getting noisy. Our old house backed up to 600 acres of open space, so I rarely heard ah. neighbors. And now I hear all of them, and it's like, I want to like lean over the fence and go, shh. I bet. Take this noise. <laughs> like some grumpy old lady. Fortunately, the guy behind us plays music I like, so it's not too bad. And it's not loud. It's just I'm trying to read, and so it's annoying. It's like one of those adjustments I need to make. And I was warm and it was, you know, it's hard to read out in the bright sunlight. So it I is. came inside and because the family room faces north, it was chilly. Oh, and yeah. my arms were cold and my legs were cold. I touched my husband. He's like, God, what are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm a snake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm always cold. If it's not 100 degrees outside, I'm cold. So. Yeah. <laughs> um. So what a, let's do a couple more self-care tips because everybody needs those right now. Oh, man, you are just not kidding. All right, <laughs> let me see. Which book do I want them from? Give me a moment. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> well, here we go. This one also applies to your friend. This is actually from the Hospitals, Care Facilities, and Hospice book. But if for each of those things, we included self-care. Okay. You know? Okay. And this one is tip. Sorry about that. Uh, 342. Take or time for yourself can include regrouping in a quiet area of the house or stepping out into the backyard for a few minutes. I did that a lot. It was easier to regroup outside of the backyard when I had coyotes and falcons and hawks. And oh, I bet. Tail bunnies and ground squirrels to deal with. Yeah. Now there's now humans. <laughs> Now, another tip that's right in there, the same chapter, actually, same book, is so pertinent for right now. And I know it doesn't apply for everyone, but I'm going to share it anyway. It's tip number 340. If you cannot be with your loved one for a period of time, call to keep in touch. When we wrote the book, that was not the, what we envisioned or this. We envisioned you went away on respite for a day or two, you know, or you, you had to go out of town on a business trip. You know, those weird things. Things from the past. Yeah. <laughs> but, 
And I know that talking on the phone doesn't work for everyone or using Zoom or, you know, I know that all those technology and even, I mean, a phone isn't technology anymore, but I know all those things don't work for everyone. But sometimes you have to, as you were saying, you have to try and maybe try it again next week or try it on a different day or even try it at a different time of day. Like maybe with this gentleman, um, maybe he, if he could have friends or relatives who could be on a Zoom call with him or be on a FaceTime with him, even for a couple of minutes, that would give him someone else to see. Mm -hmm. I, have that might... I have a suggestion for that because my mom's visual processing was so crappy oh. that she couldn't interpret what she would see on an iPhone. Mm -hmm. um, I never, I never tried with my iPad. I have an iPad mini, but uh -huh. we, we have a smart TV now, although it's an oh. Android TV and we're in like an all Apple household. So that's, it's like sort of smart TV, <laughs> but we have, you know, put the zoom calls like, uh, like airplay it from the computer or the phone oh, or whatever sure. onto our big 80. I let my husband buy an 85 inch I just have a tip on that one. Make sure you can find a console that goes underneath it that's as big because I think it's 72 inches wide or it's 70 oh something. My. Yeah, it's not 85 inches wide, so um, TV measurements are weird. But it's slightly wider than the console that's underneath it, the cabinet. And, you know, being an artist, photographer, person, it drives me bonkers. Oh, I bet. Like, if we had just gotten one that was the same width, but we got the TV and then we tried to find the console. So don't do that. It's, it looks a little odd, but if, and I think the, the care home that my mom was in, I think they must've had a smart TV, but if they could have uh, put me up on there and had her sitting there, that probably would have worked a whole lot better than the phones they were trying to use. I didn't even bother yeah. with that because, well, she wasn't awake most of the last two weeks, so it wouldn't matter. Uh, but, you know, I was, when you know, I saw her, every other day for you know in within six days when she came out of the hospital and then it was like nope no visitors you cannot mm. come in i mean they actually put sawhorses with um, caution tape in front of the door wow. they were not kidding yeah, yeah that was the uh, memory care door the main entrance obviously they didn't do that but you had to you had to walk right past the executive director and the lobby desk and they took your temperature and why are you here and who are you seeing and it was like Ugh. wow yeah, they were they worked really really hard to keep the virus out. And a week ago, I learned secondhand that one employee tested positive. I don't know 100% uh. if that's true, but you know, with over like 300 plus residents, I think yeah. you know it's a big it's a big community and oh, a yeah. lot of staff. So if they only had one, that to me is just astoundingly miraculous. So oh, but yeah, absolutely. if you can if you can throw you know, a Zoom call, Skype, FaceTime, whatever, on as big a screen as possible. It's definitely going to help somebody with, you know, Alzheimer's, dementia, whose visual processing is just, I mean, my mom saw things that didn't exist and she'd step over shadows thinking they were like branches or cracks. And it was just like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it was sometimes walking with her was, she walked fine, but all of the hazards her brain thought she was encountering were frustrating. Oh, oh I bet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like, could you please walk at something other than, I mean, like the snails are passing us by. Could you, could you step it up a little bit, please? <laughs> this is like, I'd literally like just step, step. And then if I slowed down, she would slow down. So it's like, Oh no, you walk your pace. I will try to match it. So it's like, Oh yeah. Yeah. She was crazy. Oh. So I, I thought after she broke her leg, I'm like, I know she's not going to be able to walk after this. And I was actually okay with a wheelchair because I'm like, I will be able to get her where I need her to go a oh, real sure. amount of time. Nope, that didn't work. So oh. so let's see. Is there a specific, let's, let's well, do we want to talk about a hospital care tip? Because I know people sure don't want to be can. in a hospital now. But no, someday. <laughs> you don't want to be there. But let's say, let's see. Well, mm -hmm. well, this is back in the caring for you section of hospitals. Uh, it's tip number nine, 98 and 99 will do. 98 is be sure to nourish and hydrate. 
Your loved one needs you at the top of your game to advocate for them is number 98. And number 99 is take breaks so you do not wear yourself out. Back to those breaks. Remember to use the bathroom, it specifies. It says it is amazing how we get so focused on our loved one that we forget basic needs for ourselves. That's but I mean, truly. I, I don't usually have a problem with that one, but that's because I have a tiny bladder. Ah, uh, but you know, a lot of people, it's like, oh, I need to go to the bathroom, but I'll, I'll just put it off and I'll put it off and I'll put it off. Just go to the bathroom. You know, I mean, it sounds kind of funny, but if you need to use the bathroom, it's okay to go. I agree with that one. It's also yeah. healthy. <laughs> yes. You know, um, one of the things is to, uh, and I know this is in one of the books, probably more than one, but keeping your phone and your devices charged or having um, having a one that you can grab or if you have a to-go kind of bag ready for any time you need to leave the house, especially like, God forbid, somebody has to go to the hospital right now. You're not going to be able to join them, but you're going to need to get in touch with people. So make sure you've got your charger with you. And this is when also those things come in handy that I had no, I have at least one of them that, you know, you get it free from somewhere, the little device that you charge the device. And then that device you can use to charge your phone or charge your iPad. Those are silly until the first time you need one and then they come in really handy. And those are great for traveling. So if you don't have yeah. one for that traveling thing we used to do. <laughs> yeah, the old days, yeah. Yeah, if you have but, one of those, get it out, charge it up. Right. And I mean, even making sure that you have on your phone um, those phone numbers or that personal information you might need. Because, you know, you, you know, back to before cell phones, like when I was growing up, I had everybody's phone number memorized if I called them on a regular basis. And now it's like, yeah, my neighbor, but their phone number, it's, it look under their name, you'll find it. Yeah. But the problem is, you know, let's say there is that one or two phone numbers you have memorized. And in a moment of panic, you may not remember it, if that That's was the one true. you need. So have, just put them in there, you know, having a phone number in more than one place is easy. You know, that's, you know, it's really, with our phones these days, it's really not hard. You don't have 50 scraps of paper or a phone phone book, you're, yes, I still have one, that you're carrying around that has someone's name and number. So use your phone. Make good use of it and put that stuff in there, you know. While you're watching too much TV or Tiger King or one of those shows, go through and go weed out the phone numbers. Because if you're looking at a phone number and your phone and you're going, who is this person? Probably doesn't need to be there. Probably not. Make sure your information is updated. Yes. Um, I did not realize until this past October 2019 that I did not have my home address in my part of the contact, like my personal oh, information yeah, in the uh -huh. context. So I knew once I got from downtown LA onto the freeway that I'd be able to get home. It's high five. It's not hard to get home. It's right. Like, but I did not know how to get from the hotel to the freeway. And so I said, you know, I pushed the button on my steering wheel and say, you know, give me directions to home. And it said, I don't know where you live. And I thought, well, that's just rude. <laughs> and so I said, hey, Siri, give me directions to Brentwood, California. And it tried to give me directions to Brentwood. Oopsies. I just, no, not you. <laughs> Shouldn't have said it that loud. Um, it's trying to give me the directions to Brentwood Heights, not my oh. Brentwood. And I'm like, well, this is offensive. So. Then I had to actually <laughs> type it in, which was really super annoying. And oh, then we sure. moved and we yeah. moved. We'd thought about it and just, we said, no, we're not going to. Well, maybe we will. No, no, we're not. Yes, we are. So <laughs> a lot of people thought it was very impulsive, like not thought out. It really was. It was impulsive, but it was well thought out. And it was this past weekend. I'm like, I have a feeling if I tell Siri to give me directions back to the house that it won't know how to get me home yeah. because it's not in there. So while I was waiting for the Michaels people to put the stuff in my trunk, I went in and put in my address in my phone. Yeah, that's good thinking. You, you know? know, and I almost four years ago flew off my bike. That wasn't too Ooh. bad. The crash landing was not great. And fortunately I was with four or five other people. So that wasn't a problem, but um, on Friday the 13th this year, my phone bounced in my bag uh -huh. and sent an emergency SOS to my poor daughter. Oh, no. Who went into panic mode. Oh, of course. And it's Friday the 13th, so it's doubly funny, right? 
Oh, yeah. And I did oh. not realize that I needed to turn it off. So like every so often, like every 10 minutes, it would update the SOS location. <laughs> oh, no, your poor daughter. Fortunately, she'd gotten a hold of her dad and he uses the Find My iPhone or Find My Friends. Uh -huh. I call the Stalk My Wife app. That's the one. Yeah. And he's like, she's moving, she's fine. But in these instances, you know, having your stuff updated right. is extremely important. And then I have another right. tip. Try to keep like a protein bar or yes. some kind of in your purse because I swear, you know, you think, well, I'll just run to the vending machine and all that stuff's crap. That's not good for you. And, you know, sometimes you just, you don't feel like you can go all the way to the cafeteria or or mom is taking forever and you're getting a little hungry and you don't want to get angry. So, you know, if you eat right. a little bit of your protein bar. Yeah. Or exactly that the first time well when my mom was in the hospital it's the first time was the only time and it was the end it was all all in one fell swoop oh boy it was 11 days in icu that you know didn't have a happy ending and so we get to the hospital and we all go down to grab something to eat and so i had, i remember i'd gotten a sandwich and it was just all i could do to get a half a sandwich in so i took the other half with me it wasn't bad. It was a good sandwich. And later, I'm in the waiting area up at the ICU. And this is a pretty ritzy hot ICU. You could get free graham crackers and free <laughs> coffee. So I, mean, I thought it was like, I, I pretty much ate graham crackers and coffee for the next 11 days. <sighs> but this gentleman came up, an older gentleman whose wife had just been admitted to the ICU. And he was looking at the vending machines. And somebody said, well, go downstairs and get something to eat from the cafeteria. And I said, no, you can't. I said, they... They actually closed. And I said, you can't eat that. But I have this perfectly good half a sandwich that I honestly haven't touched. So it's yours if you'd like it. So I gave it to that gentleman because just as you say, you know, if you have no, and men don't normally carry purses. So if you don't have a snack in your purse, you're going to eat some piece of junk out of the vending machine. Yeah, and besides the graham crackers. Yeah. And if you're hungry and you eat sugar, it's going to spike your blood sugar, which is not good for you. And then it's going to come back down rapidly and you just might be a, you might not mentally be, you might not have mental clarity to deal with yeah. all of the 5,000 things that they expect you to deal with all at once, which is right. frustrating. Yeah. Or you might get irrationally angry at somebody who's just trying to do their job. Yeah. You know, screaming at nurses is probably not a wise idea. Not normally. No, it's not nice anyway. So, no. you know, I, I need to do that again. I actually have um, a guest. I think he's tomorrow's episode, the 21st, April 21st, is his parents traveled across the country. His dad has Alzheimer's. And I guess there was delays and stuff, but at their age and with his, and he was in the earlier stages, the diagnosis, you know, with his diagnosis, he was not doing good. By the time he got, oh. I think from Texas back east, not entirely sure from point A to point B was enough hours, but they hydrated him. They looked up food for like, he was really out of it. And so they were looking for ways to like basically fix his brain and mm. he slept, he drank and they fed him just like really good brain healthy foods. And so he has created what is called the remember brain food. So it's oh. a basically like a protein bar that's, designed for brain health. And so it's oh, still wow. in the testing phases, still waiting for my samples to give him my opinion. Those should be coming soon, I think. <laughs> so those will be something you guys could have yeah. handy, you know, throw them in the car. Mm -hmm. you know, that way, you know, if, like you said, if you have your little go bag, that would be helpful. Put chargers right. in your go bag. You know, you might want to change of socks and underwear for you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to think of the, some of the stuff. I did not spend a lot of time in the hospital with my mom because this was right at the beginning of this whole virus thing. And I'm like, I don't uh, think this is a place that I want either one of us. Yeah. Um, and they, they kicked her out pretty quick. So, <laughs> you know, I'm not one of those. I'm terrible, terrible family member. My husband was in the hospital for three days and I basically ended up there once. The, the second time I was headed over there and he's like, oh, they're going to do an endoscopy. So come later. And I'm like, I can't come later. And he was still stoned afterwards from the medication. Right, yeah. So, you know, we had rotary friends that visited him more than I did. So uh, like, well, that's what friends are for. You know, I mean, they step in when we can't do everything either. 
Well, I just, it was like, they're dealing with you. I will deal with my life. And then our daughter didn't even go at all. So it's like, okay, we're, we're terrible at visiting. The no, hospital. you're not. Just don't worry about it. My goodness. <laughs> he felt unloved a little bit, but oh well. Aww. So do you have one last really good tip you want to share? And then I'll let you zoom with somebody else. <laughs> I do. I want to share tip, under, tip 365 from our first book. Remember that miracles happen every day. That is true. The sun comes up, flowers bloom. And I think for right now, if there's one tip we need, it's that one. I thoroughly agree. Yeah. I well, think that's important right now. And when you're dealing with somebody, especially in the later stages of Alzheimer's, sometimes you just got to find the, you got to find the little, the little filament, silver filament. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Um, and, and sometimes you got to look really hard, but you know, it helps. And I'm not generally the most positive person. I've worked on it a lot in the last 20 years. That's good. Uh, yeah. Well, 15 years thereabouts between 15 and 20. So, you know, if I can find silver linings, you know, we, we, uh, like I said, we moved rapidly it wasn't impulsive, but it felt like it. And just about the time we were getting settled, the governor said, everybody stay home. And my mom was getting more difficult. And then she fell and ended up in the hospital. And then she died. And it's like, oh Lord. My. So yeah. if I can find silver linings or even a little silver filament, everybody can. That's you know? right. I do I do agree with the going outside and getting the vitamin D, although you said it's 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 not... It's a little overcast here. It's a little yeah, cloudy. But it's not every day is overcast. No, especially down there. Yeah. <laughs> it's And we're coming into the summer months. So I really appreciate This has been so much fun. Oh, I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for having me on to talk about our books. You're welcome. And all of those are linked in the show notes so people can just click through and order. Sounds like you should get all four of them. Although the fourth one's not out yet, right? Fourth one's not out yet. But when you can get you all three a, of them. Um, do you have an ETA on the fourth one? When it's published. When it's published. <laughs> Do you have a a deadline that you're shooting for, or are you just not putting that pressure on you? Let's say this year. <laughs> that's not, you know, considering what's going on, that's not an unreasonable date. <laughs> that's what I think. You know, this year would be a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, but if, you could... I, if when I find out something more specific, I will definitely let you know. Okay. So it sounds like you guys are just starting on that one. We are close to having our 365 tips, I believe, but then, you know, you want to compile them, massage them, put group them into the right chapters, read it, edit it, correct those mistakes that you suddenly see, you know, that, you know, and discover you put this one tip is so good. It's in five different parts of the book. Now you need four more tips, you know, those sort of things. Yes. <laughs> yes. All righty. Well, you guys have a great week. Thank you. Everybody you stay too. healthy. And oh, you too. Yeah, we will. And I'm sure and don't we will. fall on your bike. Yeah, we have friends that are actually have their more hardcore recreational cyclists than my husband and I are. He's uh -huh. been more off the bike than on in the last three or four years. Oh my. Yes, he, he and he's discovered this is where exercise is very good for you. How much better mentally and physically oh, yeah. he feels. He sleeps better. You yeah, know, just all the positive things. And then we get a little bit competitive with each other and we're I think it was, I can't remember if it was our 28th anniversary, was we did a 65-mile charity bike wow. ride on our actual anniversary. Wow. And there's no way in Hades either one of us could do 65 miles right now. And we did it in four and a half hours. That's impressive. Yes, we were, we were very pleased with ourselves. So now we're, we're going out and we're, we're trying to go a little faster and a little farther every, every time we go out. But they're not riding because they're about 10 years older than we are. Oh, they're afraid if they fall and they end up injured, they don't want to end up at the hospital. Oh, absolutely. I agree. So, yeah. Which, you know, having flown off my bike, that prop wasn't so bad. The crashing onto the pavement was not so great. I bet. Um, just for, just for your knowledge. And cause I get really crazy when I see adults without helmets on. Oh, I know. I cracked my bicycle helmet all the way through. Wow. Wow. Thank so, goodness you were wearing one. Yes, indeed, because I'm pretty sure that wouldn't have been, it was bad enough breaking my collarbone. That's the only Ooh. bone I've ever broken in my whole life. Mm. Thanks, I won't do that again. 
But Good idea. My husband would like likes to stick to the trails, and mm -hmm. I don't. We went out earlier today, and it was like, okay, earlier is better. There's way less people on the trails. As it got closer to nine a.m., there were more senior citizens on the trail, and uh. then. You know, later in the morning, you get more moms with the strollers and the little kids and the dogs. And it's like, I would rather ride in the street. Yeah. The road bike is for. So we have a little debate on that, but we're getting there. Oh, good. You know, we're, we're, we're not riding too quick, not crashing into gates and launching off the handlebars. So. Good. Glad to hear it. Yeah. Uh, once was enough of that. So yeah, that's our plan. We're going to stay healthy, stay safe and just keep on moving forward because we don't have much choice just like we're very good giving it's like right you can't, you can't just say well i'm done with this nonsense <laughs> yeah no it doesn't work that way yeah unfortunately yeah so your husband and your son are doing okay they're doing okay son's in phoenix so today was his last day of classes at law school and then he'll have finals coming up oh fun yeah so <laughs> law school law school finals sound like lots of fun and that's don't they? yeah is it virtual now Oh yeah. Yeah, I figured. It's virtual. So <laughs> it's virtually not that fun either. It's probably <laughs> somehow I'm thinking it would be less fun that way. I don't know why. Yeah, because you, you I think part of it is you just don't have the camaraderie. You can't see the people next to you. Not to I mean not during finals like I mean cheating, but just to see that you're suffering equally to the person your friends, you know. At yeah. least you you know, even whether it's a final or a lecture, you can look over and you get a smile and you know, and this it's like I'm looking over and the wall doesn't smile. Yeah. Neither does the balcony or whatever. You know? And the dog is snoring on the floor. <laughs> yeah. My, my cat stopped trying to break into the room, so that's good. Yeah, I have to make sure the old guy is actually on this side of the door with me. The other night before I went to bed, I was like, all three dogs were sound asleep. The old guy was on the floor. The two younger ones were on the couch. And I'm like, you know, it'd be so nice if all three dogs would just sleep out here on the couch. So... I don't know, halfway through the night, my husband stuck him out in the living room. Uh-oh. <laughs> he has very bad arthritis in his back oh. legs, so he can't stand on his back legs very well. Oh. I don't know how he managed it, but about like 3 o'clock in the morning, I hear this. <laughs> I thought, what the hell was that? I'm like, <laughs> startled the younger dog. I'm like, oh. I was startled because I knew it was the bedroom door. And I'm like, oh my God, what the hell was that? And my husband's like, it's the dog. And I'm like, which dog? Mm. And he's like, your dog. And I'm like, my dog can't pound on the door that hard. I don't know how the dog managed. I really oh, don't. But gosh. it was so loud. It woke me up. I mean, it didn't scare me, scare me. But I was like, uh, <laughs> like is a neighbor trying to get in? Is there an emergency? <laughs> Oh and then my. he comes in, we put him on the bed, and he just out. I'm like, okay. There you so, go. Yeah. Fortunately, the other two don't sleep. The younger two don't sleep on the bed, so. Oh, that's good. Yeah. This one is a mama's boy. So. Aww. That's my crazy household. <laughs> now, will your son be coming home? Or is he going to stay in Phoenix? Um, everything is up in the air. Uh. He has an internship this summer. That hasn't been canceled with the Army JAG in San Antonio, Texas. That sounds interesting. I was going to say yeah. fun, but I don't know if fun is the right word. So it, in some ways, it waits. it's kind of dependent on what happens with that, you know, because he's also concerned if he comes back to California, is he contaminated? Or would they view him as more contaminated because he's traveled from Arizona to California and now has to travel to Texas? And if he comes to California, then he has to go Arizona to California, then we'll go back into Arizona to spend the night because it's like a 19-hour trip and then make the rest of it in one day with two of us driving. But would it, would it be better if he just went straight from Arizona because he wouldn't have that exposure to other places? So who knows? Yeah, that's probably, that's probably a better choice. But it's hard. Let's see. Yeah, that's, it's hard. And is this his last year? No, he's got one to go. Oh, one more. Okay. Let's try yeah, to Yeah, so for all the attorneys who are listening, yeah. reach out. <laughs> reach out. I, I got a good lawyer for you coming up. Does he have a specialty yet? He is actually interested in working for the government. Well, he's not going to so, get rich doing that, but that's a good job. No, and he's, but he's okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. My mom always said, yeah, you just broke at different levels. She was right. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So 
that's my that's my mom wisdom for today <laughs> <laughs> just broke it out so just just be happy with what you're doing yeah all righty so. well all right say hi to everybody and Likewise. i'm sure we'll be chatting again soon sounds good good to talk to you you too thank you thanks bye bye, -bye. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.